Hello, my name is Brian Atkinson and welcome once again to UK Aircraft Explored. Following on from our video covering the fuselage, here we shall cover the Avro Lancaster's main plane. We shall be referring to the wartime air ministry manuals that were used by air and ground crews at the time. I hope you find this interesting. We'll begin with an overview of the Lancaster's main plane. The main plane is a cantilever monoplane structure with a uniform horizontal centre section and a tapered outer plane having a dihedral of 70 degrees. The incidence of the main plane is constant throughout at 4 degrees on the cord line. To facilitate transportation, the main plane is constructed in the following separate units. The centre plane, the trailing edge centre plane, the outer plane, the trailing edge outer plane, the wing tips, the ailerons, the flaps, and finally the centre plane hinged leading edges. The front and rear spars are continuous across the centre plane, from rib 22 on one side to rib 22 on the other, and along the outer plane from rib 22 to rib 5. The wingtip from rib 5 outboard being separate structures bolted on. Hydraulically operated split trailing edge flaps are fitted to the centre section trailing edge and to the inboard end of the outer plane trailing edge. The ailerons are mounted on the outer end of the outer plane and project into the wingtip. The fuel tanks are housed between the spars on the centre section and in the outer planes. Balloon barrage protection reinforcing plates and cable cutters are fitted in the leading edge. The front and rear spars are built up in three sections from high dominium alloy, extruded top and bottom booms and L-clad sheet webs. Vertical top hat stiffeners are riveted onto the webs. The centre section spars pass through the fuselage, the booms being left solid at the fuselage transport joints at the engine ribs and at the outer plane joint but milled out for lightening purposes elsewhere along their length. The centre and outer planes are interconnected by forged shackles on the spar top and bottom booms, secured by bolts which pass right through the booms, and by joint plates bolted to each side of the spar web. From these joints, the spar booms are tapered to form an angle section which extends to rib 5. Outboard from rib 5, the spars are built integrally with the wingtip. The ribs are formed in three sections, separated by the spars. Except for some special ribs, they are built up from light alloy sheet, flanged at the top and bottom edges. Vertical top hat section stiffeners are riveted at intervals along the web, and lightning holes are situated between the bays formed by these stiffeners. A light alloy channel section boom is riveted along the top and bottom of the centre and rear sections of the ribs to stiffen the boom where the cutouts occur for stringers, the stringers being attached by small brackets riveted to the ribs. The rib sections are attached to the spar web by intruded angle brackets riveted to the rib web. The middle sections of the ribs are also secured to the spar booms by means of light alloy brackets bolted to the rib boom. The centre plane section of the main plane is built integral with the fuselage centre portion. Between the spars on each side of the fuselage is housed a detachable fuel tank secured by straps in five bearer ribs. These ribs are built up from flange pressings, having a double web with diagonal stiffening channels between, and a reinforcing strip at the lower flanges, which follow the upper contour of the tank. 
The front ends of the ribs are shaped to receive the nose of the tank, the rear end being cut away to allow the tank to be lowered when the straps supporting it are released. The ribs are cut out from the top hat section stringers which strengthen the skin above the tank. A large assembly door stiffened with top hat section stiffeners is fitted in the bottom surface of the centre plane to enable the tank to be removed. Outboard of each fuel tank is the engine nacelle, which also houses the undercarriage main wheel units when retracted. The undercarriage support beams are bolted to the front spar, which is braced to the rear spar at this point by two engine mounting ribs. These ribs are constructed of light alloy channels with upper and lower booms, vertical and diagonal bracing members and front and rear vertical end channels. The ribs are attached to the spars by forged nickel chrome steel attachment brackets bolted to the ends of the booms. The top skin of the undercarriage housing between the spars is supported by two intermediate ribs braced by transverse stringers. Attachment brackets for the stringers are fitted at the cutouts. The training edge section of the centre plane aft of the rear spar is detachable and carries the inner trailing edge flaps. In the starboard trailing edge is provided a reinforced compartment for the dinghy. The trailing edge portions of ribs 23 and 32 are built up from a T section top boom and an angle section bottom boom. The rear end of the rib has a web of light alloy skin with a bearing for the flap operating tube mounted on, whilst the front end is of open construction with a diagonal bracing member. Each outer plane is constructed in three parts. The front portion, which is forward of the rear spar, the trailing edge portion, which carries the flaps and ailerons, and the wingtip. The front portion of the outer plane extends from rib 22 to rib 5, onto which the wingtip is bolted. Forward of the front spar intermediate nose ribs are interposed between the main nose ribs and at ribs 6 and 20, picketing shackles are fitted between the nose ribs on the front spar. Between the spars, the outer and intermediate fuel tanks are mounted in special tank ribs. The outboard tank is mounted between ribs 11 and 14, in bearer ribs 12 and 13, whilst the intermediate tank is mounted between ribs 18 and 22, in bearer ribs 19, 20 and 21. These bearer ribs are of similar construction to the centre plane tank ribs, as also are the stringers above the tank compartment and the tank access door below. The mounting of the intermediate tank being similar with the exception of an additional tank rib. Rib 22 is of open construction having a channel section top and bottom booms braced with channel section diagonal struts. The joints are formed by gusset plates riveted to both sides of the channel. Two landing lamps are mounted in the under surface of the port outer plane, after the front spar, one on each side of rib 10. The outboard engine subframe is attached to the lower ends of two mounting channels on the front spar between ribs 14 and 17, and to a single mounting channel on the rear spar between ribs 15 and 16. Springs for Zeus fasteners are fitted in the undersurface for the attachment of the rear portion of the nacelle, which when removed exposes an access panel. Below the leading edge, an access panel for the engine controls and services extends from the outer plane transport joint to the outboard nacelle. The trailing edge is constructed from the rear portions of the main ribs 
mounted on an auxiliary spar. This spar consists of an extruded angle section, top and bottom booms, braced with vertical angle stiffeners. The ribs are mounted in a similar manner to the main ribs. Ribs 5, 8 and 11 have additional reinforcement for the attachment of the aileron hinges. The training edge is attached to the main rear spar by stud bolts and assembly panels are pop riveted on the underside to provide access to these studs. The wingtip is built on channel section spars which form the continuation of the main outer plane spars. There are six ribs braced by stringers and intercostals, the intermediate ribs being divided into three sections by the spars. The ribs and intercostals are pressed channel members, except for the inboard end rib, of which the flanges are separate angle extrusions. The webs of the ribs and intercostals are slotted and fit together at the intersecting joints, where both members are continuous. The extreme tip of the wing is formed by an end sweep of laminated mahogany, which is cut away towards the end for the navigation lamp in the leading edge, and the air-to-air -air recognition lamps in the trailing edge. Transparent mouldings are fitted over the lamps. The skin covering is of light alloy sheet and includes an access door in the undersurface, adjacent to the transport joint. The aileron spar is of channel section riveted to a sheet nose and stiffened by nose riblets, which are riveted to the nose and spar. The trailing edge, formed from L-clad rolled section, is riveted to the end of each rib. The ribs after the spar are of all-clad sheet, flanged along the top and bottom edges. The aileron is fabric covered and is hinged to the main plane by three brackets and by an end bearing secured to the rib at the inner end of the aileron gap. Mass balancing is by a lead weight and is mounted in the nose of the aileron at the outboard end. A trimming tab is fitted to the inboard end of the starboard aileron and is made up of a spruce framework completely covered with three ply. It is attached to the aileron by a piano type hinge and is adjusted from the pilot's cockpit by means of a hand wheel on the trimming tab control box. On each aileron is fitted the balance tab constructed and attached to the aileron in a similar manner to the trimming tab. It is operated by a connecting rod between an eye bolt on one of the hinge brackets and a lever on the tab. The split trailing edge type flaps are built up in two sections, the inner flaps being located in the centre plane and the outer flaps at the inner end of the outer plane. They are operated by tubes and links, the outer flap tube being connected to the inner tube by a ball joint. The spars are formed from an inverted U section, flanged outwards at the bottom and riveted to the skin. The leading edge is a channel section member and the trailing edge is made from extruded bar. Ribs flanged top and bottom run between these two members and the hole is covered with sheet strengthened by corrugated sheets. The trailing edges of the ribs are stiffened by a light alloy strip riveted to the rib flange. The eye bolts in the spar which engage the connecting rods from the flap operating tube in the main plane comprise eight in the inner flap and six in the outer and are made from high tensile steel bar. Piano type hinges are riveted to the flap leading edge and to the dummy spar in the main plane training edge. Well that's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing. 
and also click the bell. Remember it's free and you'll receive notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.